Well, this is different, a brand new car from a brand new car company and not a hint of electrification. This is the Ineos Grenadier and there are three things in a triangle apparently that this is supposed to do. It's supposed to look good, you can decide. It's supposed to be durable, well, time will tell, and it's supposed to be awesome off-road. Well, I'm gonna go and find out and see if I can get it even dirtier. There's been a singularity of focus about this car that I really like and I really admire. It is the ultimate off-roader. This is not, repeat, not an SUV. It's a 4x4 and it's a pretty serious 4x4 if you talk about the, the spec. It's a, a ladder frame, chassis, all the other bits are very traditional, um, old-fashioned if you will, uh, off-roading fare. Uh, so you've got recirculating ball steering. Remember that? More about that uh, later on. It is very much a, an analog car in a digital world. This vehicle has a centre diff lock, a diff lock on the front axle and a diff lock on the rear axle. A serious 4x4. None of this fancy air suspension. It's quite high, as you saw when I was struggling to get in. There's a handle on that side, but not on this side. So it, it is, it's all about serious off-roading. The approach and departure angles are, are super easy, so this vehicle should be able to go anywhere, and it's been pretty impressive so far. Now, there are things that I really, really like about this car, and it all comes down to that singularity of purpose and that vision of Sir Jim Ratcliffe at the outset when building this car. Uh, yes, you might argue that it looks a little bit like a, a Defender and also potentially looks a little bit like a Mercedes G-Class or G-Wagon. Now, the engines come from BMW. They're three litre straight six petrol or diesel engines. Uh, the gearbox comes from ZF. Uh, even the seats, Recaro seats. And from a design perspective, going back to, to design, it's not a beautiful thing. It's not meant to be a beautiful thing. This is a, a vehicle that has charm by the bucket load it will do the job that it's intended to do pretty well in my experience so far and there are areas where I'm kind of thinking oh maybe yeah, it could do a little bit better so little things that you'll love are the, the design of the interior and, and this over I, oh, I can't get enough of this this overhead panel which is just glorious it, it makes you feel like you're a pilot you know uh, check, check, and these toggle switches. Charge, yep, yeah, let's go. Um, they can always operate things like the, the overhead lights or the uh, other accessories that need power, winches and things like that, that of course you would put on a serious off-roader and of course you can put on a Grenadier. The utility belt that runs around the outside of the car for putting things on. Uh, it, clever features abound. Uh, but coming back to the interior, so I, I love this system at the top here. It's, it's something that's unique. I hope it continues on other Ineos products and there will be more electric car coming, pickup coming, and uh, this is a serious, long-term, well-funded project. The centre stack as well. <laughs> it's so nice to have knobs, buttons, a, a welcome return to sensible thinking and away from reliance on touchscreen. There is a touchscreen, there is an infotainment system, it's got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all the stuff that you would, uh, you would really want. And then when you look down here, there's a, a gear shifter, it's an automatic obviously, from BMW. Why wouldn't you if you've got a BMW engine and it works well, and a rotary controller. Let's move on to some of the things that I'm not so uh, so keen on or perhaps could be changed. It's not raining now, my wipers are going. Um, no automatic wipers these days. And some of the creature comforts uh, that Ineos will say, you don't need those, like keyless entry and keyless go. It's got heated seats, why not heat the steering wheel as well in a car like this? But there's, a, there's my, one of my favorite features. Hang on, I haven't done this yet. Oh, that's, that's toot. See, that's a gentle 
use of the horn to, to warn cyclists. It's a, it's a more polite use of the horn. That's a, that's a nice thing. A two-spoke steering wheel. I prefer a three-spoke wheel rather than two-spoke because when you're off-roading, you need to know which way the wheels are, are pointing. And sometimes with this wheel, you kind of, uh, which way is this? Is this straight or, or not? That's a, uh, uh, one issue. Uh, the wipers, very much old school wipers. If I put them on, you, you probably can't hear it, but you can hear And the one at the back as well, they, uh, they make a noise. But they also leave a massive blind spot here as if the problem with A-pillars wasn't bad enough these days you get a really big blind spot here which just isn't uh, isn't great on the road you're sort of peering around at, at roundabouts and, and things like that there are some sort of other fundamentals that I would question things like there's a, a massive down here in the, in the footwell a massive footrest which forces your, your leg quite high up here um, uh, that's probably something to do with the routing of the exhaust system from the six-cylinder BMW but it's not I really want to stretch my leg a little bit more, just make the footwell a, a little bit cramped. That said, this is, you know, we're going over some pretty bumpy stuff now and rutted tracks in this fabulous Highland estate that we're driving through at the moment. Uh, this is a, a comfy car. And, and on road, again, you have to caveat everything with the singularity of purpose. This is a serious 4x4. The ride quality isn't that bad. And considering what we're going over here, you know, I feel reasonably well isolated from things. And, and I'm sitting in rather lovely, nicely trimmed leather if you want it. Oh, there's a cattle grid. Leather if you want it. Recaro chairs, um, which are really, really quite nice. But let's talk about the steering now recirculating ball steering it's pretty good for off-road because you don't necessarily get the, the kickback that you might do on the when you, if you hit a boulder or something but on the road the steering just it's not very nice it's, yeah it's just rather unusual feeling there's not any feedback it doesn't inspire confidence if you're going around a, a quick corner or a long sweeping bend but you have to do a fair bit of arm twirling and but when you're driving not on tracks like this, you do find that you're constantly correcting. And, you know, I'm just going to go down a straight line here. You know, I can wiggle the, the wheel around like that and I'm barely going anywhere. So I think I would like a steering system that felt a little bit more natural. Off-road, as far as we, we can see, uh, it's, um, it's pretty capable. Playing around with some of the systems is, is a bit of a faff. Here you have to go through a, uh, a convoluted process. So there's a, a separate knob down here that you'll see next to the, the gear shifter, which um, you have to pull a collar up, pull it back to get into low range, take it across to get into, uh, into the, the, the center diff lock. Uh, and it's quite, <laughs> these quite a bit of effort to use. Then if you want to operate the, the, the diffs on the front and rear axles, you have to go through a process of, of being in, using these buttons up here, love them, absolutely love them. Um, but I think you press off-road mode first and then you press the rear diff lock first, wait for the light to flash, you press it again and then the, it's a faff, it's a faff. Um, and whilst I admire the, the thinking that's, let's keep it old school, sometimes you just want an easy life, don't you? I want it to be reliable. I want it to be able to bounce around like this over country lanes, but I don't want to have to force levers around wondering if I've got it back into high range. Oh, what's that grinding noise? No, I clearly haven't. You know, all that's happened. And I got stuck in the mud yesterday because I'll, I'll admit it's probably user error, um, but then it may well have been vehicle error because it's so hard to work out which button you press in what order. It's all written on there, but you know, I just want uh, an easy life. The, the BMW engine, um, this is the, the petrol three litre, good amount of torque, it's been retuned for, recalibrated for use in this vehicle and it, it is a, a highlight. The performance is good, you put your foot down, there's a, a fair bit of poke there. The ZF gearbox is, is pretty sublime actually. Thinking about it, you know, what I recommend it to people, there are, are flaws, the, the steering, the blind spot, the footrest creature comforts or lack of creature comforts but you know you're buying what is a 4x4 and again not an SUV kind of like it for that <laughs> difference is good
and this is very different. Yep, that's uh, definitely a roof and a very nice roof too. So the Ineos Grenadier, as I said, it's, it's full of charm, but quite often charm comes from floors. So it's not perfect. Would I buy one? Probably not, because I like my creature comforts, but will it go anywhere? Probably. Do I like it? Yeah, I really do. But that's down to charm and me being a bit mad.